What's up everybody, this is Armin, and I'm going to talk to you today about standard notation and reading standard notation. So this is going to be about if you look at a sheet music, you'll be able to understand what is on the page. Now you won't really understand what's going on on the page necessarily, but you'll be able to follow along with it. So um, this will be kind of oriented towards guitarists and pianists, because I'm going to be showing some pictures of guitars and pianos. It's very easy to relate to those two instruments. Um, because the piano shows notes very easily, the guitar is, is a very common instrument. Probably most of you who are watching this are guitarists. So, uh, without further ado, let's get on the topic. A very simple demonstration of what a half step and a whole step are is on a guitar neck, because between every fret, from fret to fret, is a half step. So if you skip two frets, then it's a whole step. So as you see here, the two arrows point to what would be a half step if you are on the same string. So in any string, you move up a fret or down a fret, that is a half step. It's a little bit different on a piano keyboard because there are black notes mixed in amongst the white notes, and from white note to white note isn't necessarily a half step. However, if there's not a black note between the two white notes, as you see here, then they are a half step. But as pictured here, between these two white notes, there is a black note and that is a whole step as a result of which so from a white note to its adjacent black note would be a half step instead that's just a little bit of some musical terminology and now for some more because that's all I'm going to be showing you uh, what does this mean for you as far as standard notation well a half step up is represented in musical notation by a sharp which is looks like a pound sign and you'll see that in a little bit um, and it, so a sharp just means one half step up and you'll put that in front of a note which will mean that note but a half step up from that note and then the other thing is well what about a half step down well you put a little thing that looks like a B in front of it and that is called a flat so here's a note sharp would be above it flat would be below it alright let's talk about some notes on the screen you see the names of all the notes that exist on the musical notation staff. So from A to G there are also some sharps and flats mixed in between. Now between A and B and any of the other notes you see there's a sharp slash a flat and since being sharp or being flat is relative to the note from the perspective of A that note is a sharp. From the perspective of B that note is B flat but if you look at the keyboard between A and B is just that little black note on a piano and it's A sharp or B flat. It depends on the way you're notating it. Um, you'll notice between B, C and E and F there is not one and that's just the way it works. Now you're probably wondering where all this stuff plays into the instrument so on the screen the red arrow is pointing to a C. So if you hit that note you will get C. If you hit the black note to the right of the C, you will get C sharp. If you hit the white note to the left of C, you will get B. Uh, to the right goes higher in pitch, to the left goes lower in pitch. And similarly for your guitarists, uh, on this fretboard, the arrow is pointing to this string and fret where you would get the equivalent C. And one fret up, one fret down, you get C sharp and B respectively. All right, we're going to change gears now, and we're going to talk about the staff. We're going to talk about the treble and the bass clef. And uh, I'm going to relate that back to the instruments as we just described. What you see on the screen now is what we call the grand staff. On the top of the screen is that curly cue thing with a bunch of lines, and that is called the treble clef because that curly cue sign signifies it is the treble clef. And in the bottom of the screen is another set of five lines and another little hook-looking thing with dot two dots, and that is called the bass clef. In the treble clef, the curly Q shape circles around a line, and that same line is signified with the red dot, and that is a G, the G above middle C. Uh, middle C being, if you walk up to a piano, it's the C that's in the middle of the piano. And on the bass clef, similarly, between the two dots is an F. So we call the treble clef sometimes G clef and the bass clef sometimes F clef. And they're just your reference points for where all the notes are. What you're looking at now is the entire staff with names of every note 
and where they are. Now, the, the names don't exactly look very nicely on top of the line, so I put them to the side of the line that they are represented by. So if you ever look at a piece of music and there is a note at a position that you see in a letter, that is what note it is. Pretty novel concept. Now, between the lowest D on the treble clef and the highest B on the bass clef is middle C. What you see here is middle C in relation to the treble clef. And you'll see it's on a line that's not part of the standard staff, and we call that a ledger line. A ledger line is strictly an extra little line that shows you how far a note is from the actual clef. So you can just figure out what note it is. You can't just figure it out if it's just hanging out there. This is what middle C is in relation to the bass clef, and sometimes you'll see both of the clefs sandwiched together, and the C will just kind of sit between them. This is just an example of the treble clef going from middle C up two octaves, and two octaves is just uh, two sets of eight notes in the scale. Um, so it goes from C to C to C, as you see. And now you're probably wondering, well, Armand, now that I know all this stuff about the staff, why don't we talk about this in relation to my instrument? So, thanks to my handy-dandy program, Guitar Pro, I can show you this. The red dot indicates where on the fretboard your C is, and also on the keyboard where your C is, and it all is also pictured on the staff. Uh, Guitar Pro is a pretty nifty program for doing this. All right, that's all the information I'm going to cram into this video. Um, in order to avoid really cramming for the last few minutes of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and make another one. Uh, I'll link that one to the sidebar. And if you want to take a break, I guess, don't click on it just yet. Your brain's probably fried from all the information if you haven't heard it before. But um, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.